Mark 16, 15. 16. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. All right? And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I said, and they will recover. We're not afraid of sickness now. As Christian folk, we are not afraid of sickness. Anybody here afraid of sickness? Huh? Now, now as I'm building your faith, the enemy and life is going to try you. And somebody's going to be standing right there in the room with your own mom and the doctor's going to give you a bad notice. You better not be afraid of what that doctor said to you because you're a woman, a man of faith. And doctor, I appreciate you. I respect your knowledge, but you do not have the last word because I believe in a God who can heal by way of medicine or a miracle. And they will recover. 19. Oh, no, we don't need 19. Let's stop right there. All right, now. Now, now, I got to break this down. This is very known to people, the scripture here. But how many of you know y'all don't even much read this stuff because half of y'all don't plan on ever doing half of this stuff? That most of you in here, will, you don't ever plan on casting out demons. If a demon jumped up in here, half of you going to run. All right? Most of you in here do not plan on taking up serpents because if you're anything like me and the couple times I've seen snakes around my house, I decided the snake could have the house. That's just the type of person I am that I you know if this is where you want to live, then I will respectfully move because you know that I am convinced that snakes and alligators want to eat me. Now, that's just me. All right? So some of you don't plan on just, just drinking deadly poisons. I mean, that's just not something you're looking forward to do. Hallelujah, I'm glory to God. I'm glad I'm going to drink the poison in Jesus' name. No. Now, there, are, there is a, 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 an extremist Pentecostal uh, sect that they take these snakes and, you know, just walk around shouting and dancing with the snakes. And, uh, you know, for the most part, nobody gets hurt, but people do get bit. And at once one or two people have died from it. Uh, I do not subscribe to it. You understand? And I'm very careful as a pastor that I do not talk against, you know, too much. I, I don't like to be that type of guy. Uh, but I do have to let you all know as your, as your spiritual father so that you're not, you're not led away by some stuff, you know. Because sometimes you can get so on fire for God that you just blow up. You know, you just calm down. God is not that spooky. Please calm down. I just see an aura around you. It's the light. <laughs> All right, I'm about to break down the signs of faith. How many people believe? Don't be scared. It's not to set you up. Do you believe? It doesn't mean your faith is at the best place you are. But do you believe? Yeah. All right, there's some stuff that should show forth in your life. There's some signs that will follow you. What does that mean? It'll mean some things will be done in your life, by your life, because you are a person, a man or woman of faith. First off, he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. First, in my name, you will cast out demons. Now, you have got to take this away from the literal uh, a word here. Because what God is saying in this is as you believe, some of you will never cast out demons. But I am giving you spiritual authority. Come on here. You, I'm giving you, you might never uh, deal with someone that's demon possessed and have to cast that demon out. But I will give you the authority to tell the devil where he can and can't go. I will give you the authority to say, Satan, you are, you are trying to ruin my marriage and I rebuke you. I cast you and your confusion. I cast you and your hatred out of the heart of me and my wife. We hate each other and hatred is not of God. I cast you out of our heart right now. See, nobody want to hear that type of stuff. Just because you feel it, that don't mean it's of God. You got you to keep your emotions in check. 
Satan, the blood is against you. I bind you from touching my emotions. The first sign is that I'm going to make you strong like me. I'm going to give you the authority, the spiritual authority to tell the devil you're off limits. Get off my property. And then there's three words that I love. He said, you're going to do it in my name. In other words, he said, whatever you say, I'm going to back you up. In other words, he's saying, I'm giving you the power of eternity. A power of attorney so that you can regulate laws in the earth in my name. So that you can say, Satan, it is illegal for you to touch my child's body. It is illegal and I command you to let him go in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, tell me you got authority. You have authority. So why are you living such a defeated life? Go through what you must go through. But you must go through with the victory. Then he says, I'm going to, that's the first one, spiritual authority. Then he says, they will speak with new tongues. All right. Now this was before Acts. This was before the upper room. So they didn't know about that yet. But now what does it mean in this year, 2010? What does it mean? It means I'm going to give you spiritual maturity. Right? First, I'm going to give you spiritual authority. Then I'm going to give you spiritual maturity. What does that mean? That you won't just be somebody speaking in tongues, but your spirit will have manifestation and something that's very important to a relationship, communication. See, some of you that don't understand tongues or, or you, you, you stray away from it, you don't understand that tongues is communication. And there's no relationship that lasts without communication. And we are spirit being, but we're also flesh being, and we can't always communicate in the flesh. Because sometimes we should be praying of things that we know not of. But if we walk over into the realm of the spirit, the spirit knowing all things will make intercession for us. So when people are speaking in tongues, and let me deal with some tongue talkers, you're not speaking in tongues to show that you're more spiritual than other people. You ought to know in the spirit that I, I don't know, but I might be praying in the next week already. That the spirit knows something I don't know about. All right? Spiritual maturity through two words, manifestation and communication. Nori, you and Radiant, your marriage is going to get so tight as you continue to learn how to communicate. So how can we have a relationship, these, these carnal beings we're carnal beings, but we have to be uh, consumed and used by the spiritual being God. We got to learn how to communicate. Right, right. We, there's a part of us, there's a spirit of us, the spirit man. That's the part that relates flesh is willing, flesh is weak, but spirit is willing, right? So that, that spirit man, that's the part that, that is of God. That, that, so that has to be filled with his spirit so that we can learn how to communicate in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Aren't we glad that we have that ability in this dispensation? Aren't we glad that he did not leave us? He didn't just come, die on a cross, and then leave us with a, with a few stories. But he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with some help. I'm going to leave you with the paraclete, the comforter. And this one will dwell in you and will lead and guide you into all truth. Amen? Amen. So now, you're going to get spiritual maturity. And then the third one is they will take up serpents and they will drink of anything deadly and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means harm them now because there's two spiritual meanings behind this that if we're going to be men and women of faith we're going to have to walk in another level of maturity first off he mentioned serpents so now the serpent is the symbol of deception all right so he's saying if you believe me I'm gonna make you immune to deception so my challenge is how come so many spirit-filled people getting food where is your spiritual discernment that you can see a snake for a snake I don't hear nobody in here. That's the way the devil wins. 
I'm going to deceive you into thinking you got to do it. You have to have it. How many people? You still believe? I'm showing you what you have if you're a man or woman of faith. You don't have to be deceived. You don't have to give your life to somebody for nine months to find out they were a dirty dog. Something just wasn't right in my spirit from Jump Street. When they gave me that number, I heard a pssst. The Holy Spirit makes me immune to deception. Because you've got to have a discernment between clean and unclean. Then it talks about if you drink something deadly. Now we're not going to just, now in that time, Christians were being persecuted. They were challenging them in their faith and they were, they were killing them. So they would say, drink this. God said, if you serve in me and they give you something, they're trying to kill you, stop you from preaching the gospel, stop you from spreading the word of God, I promise you, you'll drink that and it'll be like Kool-Aid. A cool, refreshing drink. How many know that some of you lived through other things people died in? The devil had, the devil had conjured up some, some type of mixture for you to get you caught up in a certain lifestyle, caught up in a certain way of life, and you drank that thing and God said, not so. It did not even harm you. To look at somebody and say, I'm not as bad as I'm supposed to be. Oh, now I know most of you have been saved all your life, but I was in some stuff. Every time I drive past Frenchtown, I don't know why I'm not the crackhead. But it's because God, he made me immune to the poisons of this world. And when you walk by faith, that's what God will do for you. He will make you immune to the poisons of this world. There's a whole lot out here. There's a whole lot out there that will deceive you and poison you. Huh? He'll make it or you're immune to it. He'll make sure your heart never turns from him. These are signs that follow them that believe. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And you will get, there's another way to define this, this part, you will get divine protection from persecution. Say that with me, divine protection, divine protection. from persecution. If you are attacked for being a believer, if you are attacked for trusting God, I promise you whatever fiery dot they throw at you, I will give you divine protection from every bit of persecution. Last sign that will follow them is that God, they, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I love that word recover because it does not just mean that they're going to feel better. It also includes in there that they're going to get the time back. Come on, I need some Bible readers in here. You know that God will redeem the time. Yes, he will. And the years that the canker worm and the locust stole from you, he'll give it back to you. Yes, he will. Thank you, Lord. But here's the thing. We want people to lay hand on us. But to be people of faith, you're supposed to lay hand on people. I remember we used to go on evangelistic trips with my, 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 my grandmother and uh, sometimes she'd go to the hospital. Man, we didn't want to go with her, man. Because we know she's going to see one person and she's going to stop in like 10 rooms. You know, and she, her and the mothers, they walking in doing like this here. You know, when, they, when church mothers do like this here, they ready to lay hands on something. Huh? They get the oil in their purse. I know all they, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They done took me and smeared me up. I, I look so greasy coming in the hospital. I'm like. <laughs> they smeared me up. They'll go visit the person that they came to see from the church and pray with them, lay hands on them and believe for them to be well. And walk them past. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What's your name, sister? Yes. <laughs> I'm Mother Keith. And I came to pray with my sister, but the Lord told me to stop by your room. Do you believe the Lord for healing? Yes. 
Because I'm going to lay hands on you and you're going to be healed. That's the type of stuff. But see, we don't walk like that no more. We don't walk like that no more. How many of you got enough faith not to even call the doctor sometime? Lay hand on yourself. In the name of Jesus, I call every organ in my body into functioning properly. I call this fever to go down in Jesus' name. This new age, everything is medicine. Everything. That's a whole nother prayer. We're going to pray for the God to deliver us from prescription drugs. My, my God. You preach it, all prescription does, drug do is make you numb from something that's still there. But I want to recover. I want to be completely healed from it. And if you walk by faith, you'll be able to lay hands on the sick, whether the sick is you or somebody else. And you will recover. Now my teaching is over tonight, but I got to let you know what is the sign of faith. One, it's spiritual authority. Two, it's spiritual maturity. Three, is divine protection. And four, is divine manifestation. That when I touch a thing, when I speak to a thing, a God result comes out of it. Now, if you can't remember spiritual authority, spiritual maturity, divine protection, and divine manifestation, remember this one word, victory. That if you believe, you've got to come out with the victory. You've got to come out with joy in your heart. You've got to come out with a medal on your chest that says, I went through the fire, but I came out with the victory. Somebody, high five somebody and say victory. That's what the sign says. Victory. Touch somebody and tell them victory shall follow you. If you only believe, look at somebody and say victory is following me now. It'll follow me when I get home. It'll follow me at the grocery store. It'll follow me at my job. These signs shall follow them that believe. Your sign might say defeated, but my sign says victory. Let me give you ghetto gospel for those of you that need it. When you believe God, all you do is win. Touch somebody and say, all I do is win. No matter what, all I do is win. When you believe in God, not in results, but when you believe in God, you can expect results because God says, those that believe in me, I will give them the power of an attorney yes. to regulate laws and to act in the earth and to speak to things that be not as though they are and they will become because I've given you the authority. Everybody standing tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise right now. Come on, give the Lord praise right now. Give him praise like you got the victory. Come on, turn up the praise in here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 When I was in Fort Myers at the Signs and Wonders Conference, and the Lord took me to that scripture, and he said, I need you to look at that scripture now. He says, you're taking the scripture too literal. I need you to let me, the Holy Spirit, translate that scripture for present day living. I give you spiritual authority, spiritual maturity, divine protection, and divine manifestation. That my life shows who I believe in. 
Not what I believe for, but everything about my life shows who I believe in. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I believe that he's the creator of all mankind. I believe that he made the heavens and the earth. I believe that no one came here but through a monkey, but God designed us with his own hands. And I believe that God breathed his breath into us. That's why to this present day, if he ever stops breathing into us, we leave. This is what I believe. Because if I came from a monkey, a monkey would still be producing man. I did not evolve. I can evolve in my faith. But I was born into this earth. I was, he predestined me. He foreknew me. Before you ever knew me, he knew me. Before I ever took a breath, he said, you know what? I got an idea in my head for Samuel Lamar Simmons. And he said, that's a good idea. I'm going to make it happen. And now I'm living in the earth to make sure that I make sure God's dream about me comes true. Yes, sir. 